Okay, today is Monday, August 10, 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is the meeting of the Kubernetes CSI implementation group. Uh, first on the agenda, we're going to review the open tasks for Q3. We have three weeks left until code freeze. Uh, first is a uh, Kubelet device registration mechanism. Um, Vlad, do you want to give an update on this? Um, I saw... I saw uh, some discussion going over the weekend from um, Renault. Uh, um, I think there's some progress being made there. Okay. Uh, I haven't looked deeply to see what exactly is going on, but I, from the gist of it, it looks like there's some progress being done. Um, <clears throat> and that's on the uh, that's on the Slack. Some okay. Slack conversations going on. Um, as far as the tasks for uh, for our internal tasks, I last week I, kind of, I spent um, sometimes looking into what can be done with a um, with a true proxy um, that would uh, serve as that would serve the the that would provide the um, the socket. For both the registrar and the backing um, driver, it's something that can be done, but it would require time. So I'm not sure if it's something. When I'm, since we only have three weeks left, I'm, I don't know. It may be that we took we take the options of just documenting how it, how it works right for for now. Okay, I'll leave that up to you. Do if time is <laughs> call there. Yeah, if, if we if I have time or because I think Sergey might be on vacation or something like that. Um, if I have time, um, I'll look at it some more. If not, we'll just do the default fallback, which is to just do the documenting of, of what uh, how it needs to be set up and basically which is how it works right now. So I'm, I'm going to let Renault. Um, uh, finalize whatever the work is doing there and then see what we need to do to update our code on our side to to uh, to work with uh, whatever those changes may be cool sounds good yeah uh, next up uh, uh, sorry did you have anything else uh no that uh that is it okay uh next up is the csi cluster re uh driver registry work uh, I sent out a proposal last week about that. Uh, I've gotten feedback on it from Jan, uh, and uh, I'm going to revise that today and uh, hopefully start actually implementing it in parallel um, so that as soon as we get approval, we can get it merged and uh, unblock the remainder of this uh, these other tasks that are hanging off of it. Uh, speaking of which, we have new node status field for, oh, this is a separate task, not related. New node status field for CSI drivers. Um, any uh, updates on this? I don't think Jan's on the call today. Uh, does anybody have the latest on it? No, uh, I haven't looked at that. Um, I mean, for the last meeting, I don't think there was any movement. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think the last uh, that we left off on this, um, Jan said he would start a thread on SIG architecture. We'll follow up there and see what happened. Uh, next up is uh, do not require attach operation. Um, no update here. I think it's also pending on my cluster registry. Um, inline volume support. Uh, so Vlad, do you have a status on this? Were you able to update the uh, PR? Um, I, I plan to do that today. Um, okay. I'm kind of busy, but the, um, my, my, uh, my activities for today is to look to see what needs to be updated. If not, I'm just going to start. Perfect. Um, so this also has a dependency on the, the cluster driver registry. Uh, so you may want to take a look at that design. Uh, yes and uh, propose anything that you want me to add in there for, that'll make it easier for this. Definitely. Cool. Uh, next up is pass workload information to CSI. 
Uh, proposal looks good. Was the last status waiting on the cluster registry as well? Uh, I think we should uh, get this merged and then uh, uh, start working on it in parallel while the CSI registry comes up. <coughs> Talk to Jan about that offline. Uh, next up is Kubernetes to CSI topology support. Um, don't believe Chang is on the line, uh, but last uh, status update, he was working on uh, implementing it in all the various components. Uh, and then we have uh, PT P2's, uh, the bug fixes for block volume. Um, Vlad, do you have anybody actively working on that at the moment? Um, not as much as I want to, but, um, I have, I'm, I'm lining up to, to do some bug fix fixes, whatever low hanging fruit I have, I'm going to, um, either work on it and try to find somebody that, but, um, I'm trying to find somebody to work on it. Okay, cool. And if, if you can't, uh, no big deal. We can, uh, a lot of people on this call, I think. Right, right. Willing to help too. So. Yep. All right. Next up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Brad found an owner for Mountain Namespace Propagation, Fabio. Uh, I'm not sure if Brad is on the call, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like he is. So uh, we'll have to wait to get an update on that, uh, probably at the community meeting. Uh, it looks like Chang joined us. Uh, Chang, do you want to give an update on uh, the topology stuff? Sure. I was able to get the uh, driver registrar labeling to, to work. Um, and uh, right now it's just a prototype stage, but we're pushing that along. Um, nice. Getting, trying to get the uh, basic external provisioner functionality to work, uh, running into some hard back issues and trying to get a result today. Cool. Cool, thank you, uh, Chang. Uh, I know uh, with the latest changes with the external provisioner uh, that Matt Wong made, uh, there are additional requirements for uh, RBAC rules that need to be set up. Um, uh, okay, okay. So it, if that is the case, then uh, we should make sure that the, I think there's like an external provisioner role that we have inside the Kubernetes RBAC uh, rules that we ship. We should make sure to update those um, so that these drivers don't have to do anything special. They can just use that role. Okay. Is that is that PR somewhere in this document, or can I just search uh, for it? Yeah. So Matt Chang, or sorry, Matt Wong was. Uh, I think it's this big block of uh, scaling issues. Gotcha. And if you okay. dig through some of these PRs, I think you'll find. Uh, I think it's system it. colon control. Controller, if I'm not mistaken, is the RBAC rule? Oh, sorry, required? system. Would that would that mean that the call kubelet? Would that mean that the document today in the documentation we ask the driver developers uh, when they deploy their YAML, they have the RBAC rule set in them? Would that means that that would have to be changed. I think it depends on what the RBAC rule is. I know for. Uh, for these uh, existing uh, controllers that we have, the sidecar containers, external provisioner, external attacher, we created roles inside the Kubernetes core that ship with every version of Kubernetes that say, here's what the roles are. And so that all the uh, vendors need to do is uh, create a binding to that role uh, for their, uh, uh, I guess, service account. And that seems to work well. So I think we just need to update that. Uh, we need to update the, 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 the rules inside the core Kubernetes. And once that's updated, then I think everything should just work. But I'm, I haven't dug into this. That's just my layman understanding. Okay. I can try it out today. That's exactly the error I was running into. So OK. Pretty, yeah, they, yeah. That, that's weird because uh, I just bring this up because I want to make sure that we have that correct in our documentation. I don't, I don't know if we do. Yeah, I think he added this very recently. So uh, 
maybe Luis, you can work with Chang to uh, get to the bottom of this and clarify if there's documentation changes, if there's code changes needed, what's going on. Yeah, yeah, because if, the, yeah, I mean, I can see it right now. We have like the example in our docs has the entire RBAC setup. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can try it out today and see if any documentation is needed. My understanding is the roles themselves are like like Sal was saying uh, in core Kubernetes. Uh, users uh, users have to set up the cluster role bindings, but not the roles themselves. Um, but I'll try it out. Like I had to do something similar for um, enabling no no get access, uh, and that's all done in in the uh, bootstrap policy inside the Kubernetes core. Um, so users shouldn't have to worry about it. Right. But I'll, I'll try it out. I'll try it out today and see see if that's truly the case. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, I think what he did was he now reads and writes a endpoint object, and so you need to, to update that uh, to say that that's allowed. Okay. All right, cool, thank you. And, uh, oh, Jan's on the call. Hi, Jan. Hello, sorry, I'm late. Uh, no worries, uh, do you have any uh, updates or any questions or anything you wanna talk about? Uh, yeah, I posted a proposal for speaking at Edge. Okay. And I reviewed your proposal for the registry. Yep. Yep. And that's it. Cool. So yeah, I think um, for this, uh, I will take a look at it today and uh, uh, hopefully we can get this merged. Do you think you can start on work without um, the registry in parallel? Um, I need the CRD. Uh, okay. And all the code for that in Kubernetes to start with Kubernetes. Okay. So maybe uh, I can get you the schema for the CRD and then you can get started. Maybe. Okay. All right. I want to make sure that I'm trying to unblock you as quickly as possible. Um, so. Yeah, and I was on SIC uh, architecture and I sent them a document how CRD could work in Kubernetes for uh, internal components like Kubernetes and Edge uh, Controller. And uh, there is a little discussion ongoing where the code should live, where the API should be defined, what component should register the CRD, and that everything needs to be resilient uh, if the CRD is missing for a while and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, I'll try to find the document. Did you already have a meeting with them or you just sent them a, an email? Uh, no, this is just based on email. I we may join SIP Architecture on Thursday. Uh, Jan was at the meeting last week, and then they told uh, they told us just to send an email. Okay. And it sounds like there's a lot of discussion on the thread, so yeah, it might be worth having a face to face meeting. <laughs> Got a lot of attention. All right, cool. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Is it overall uh, looking like they would be okay with it? Yeah, it seems so. Okay, awesome. All right, I'll take a look at that because it's going to apply directly to the registry as well. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Jan. Uh, okay, next up are PRs that need attention. Uh, Sarjeet, limitation with provisioner when delete snapshot RPC. You, RP you can delete that. Okay. That's something we discussed and we lost it. Cool. Uh, and then Chang had a PR out. 
Looks like that's been merged. Okay, looks like this is a docs PR that needs approval. Is anyone taking a look at this? Looks like Sergey is. Yeah, we need somebody uh, to take a look at it that knows that if this is okay or not. Either way, that's been written. Uh, Kubelet plugin watcher code. Who is most familiar with that? Sergey is, I think he's back from vacation, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I'll take a look at it too. I think Vladimir was supposed to look at it too, right? Yeah. I think Vlad's like, got a ton on his plate, so I don't want to throw more. Yeah. <laughs> thought, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like doing 90% of the work for this quarter. <laughs> well, I'll say that. That's scary. Yeah. Um, all right. Snapshots uh, PR needs review. Uh, uh, Jing and Ching. Uh, did their weekly snapshots meeting right before this and uh, they did a demo. Uh, it's looking very good. Um, so uh, please take a look at those PRs. Uh, Shing, is anybody uh, actively reviewing them right now? Uh, so Luis just reviewed it on uh, Friday. Perfect. And, uh, he said it's good to go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, merge it, merge it. You want to yeah. press the button? I will do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so to, in today's meeting, there was a, uh, we discussed one more change to API. Uh, okay. Because, you know, remember I was uh, uh, making some changes to handle the secrets, right? So I only added that for Chris snapshot. So we still right. need that for DD snapshot so that we need to add a uh, the volume snapshot class to the uh, volume snapshot content as well. So you need to make that okay. one more change. And also, um, we also talk about size. If when you create a volume from snapshot, if it's, the size is bigger than a snapshot, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we decide to add a size in volume snapshot and also in the uh, the content. So that would be the in the volume uh, in the snapshot source. So basically, got it. No. So that's to change in the APIs. <laughs> yeah, cool. that's fine. I just want to okay. bring up it. It, it just if you keep working on the PRs, it's mm -hmm. almost like the PR is your repo. So mm. you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. right now it's your entire work is in the PR, but if, uh, if it's not like we don't see the stages of development because everything is in PR. Right. So if we could just merge it and then we could see the changes as the, as the project matures, it may be easier. So don't, don't feel like you can't, like yeah. you have to wait, just, just merge it. My suggestion is merge it and then continue okay. uh, improving. I, I think that's good I, advice. Uh, let me take a look at this right after this meeting. And okay. uh, if you're okay with it, Shing, I'll go ahead and merge this as your base PRs. Yeah, yeah, of course. And then, <laughs> We'd uh, like to get it merged first, especially the, the API one because it has so many generated files. It's just yeah. <laughs> difficult to look. Yeah, this has 5 yeah. million uh, lines of code. <laughs> yeah, but those are all generated, right? So the real change are just in types dot. dot go so Perfect. if you okay. can get this one more then we can just continue make changes to it it'll be much easier for everyone <laughs> yeah that's perfect I'll, I'll take a look at it and then i'll hit the big fat merge button and then you guys can continue working on it uh okay awesome <laughs> and also uh we lads also said he's going to uh, review it as well so i don't know if he has get the chance to look at it yet okay yeah um, i, I I kind of looked at. It. I did look at it, um, oh, okay. but not as as, um, as as I'd like to. And plus, um, the meeting today kind of um, answered some of the questions, some questions I had. I think uh, you're on mute now. I think I only heard. Oh, oh uh, no, that, that, that was it. I was just saying the, the oh, okay. after the meetings, um, some of the questions I had were were answered. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Thanks. Okay. So next up is, um, it looks like Hamant has a PR out uh, for dynamic volume limits uh, for CSI uh, that needs review. Uh, looks like it has a ton of comments on it. Um, 
if you can just load second second commit, that'll be like quicker, I think. Okay. Uh, is it this one or this one? The this yeah the CSS one. support the yeah. recent one yeah sorry yeah all right but still shows big oh. right it's basically a very simple you can just hide the comments uh, sad maybe on the document that'll be easier to uh, show comments there's a checkbox yeah yeah it's a very small this thing but just it's like a bunch of comments all right so it's uh const sorry the cost anyway <clears throat> so there's a the proposal is to do this in kubernetes use this prefix for csi because attached volumes is the prefix we are using for other volume types in tree and it's it's quite simple because if the total key length is greater than the resource length then compute the shaft or driver name and get first 36 characters <laughs> otherwise just use the driver name mm. and uh, this function will reduce both a node and scheduler for determining csa dash limit key the value of the limit will be retrieved using get node info csa rpc call and set if non-zero yeah so I think yeah, sure. it's a reasonable workaround, honestly. Like, what else are we gonna do? Uh, we had this driver. The, the driver registry is a good option. <laughs> the driver registry. Yeah, that we could use it for like the the names. mapping. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> we could put that put it there, but but uh, part of me thinks that we can. We don't need to depend on it because, like, if if the proper, the registry thing gets accepted, then that's fine. Then we can migrate to it, maybe, mm. uh, because there's no API change. So, the the key thing will be that being backward compatible with old naming convention. And if the key name we we change internally in Kubernetes, is it considered an API change? I don't think so. But <clears throat> right, right. So. That's the one solid alternative we have. Okay. Uh, who are the uh, stakeholders who have to approve this? I think I'll, I have, I'll pick Jordan and okay. maybe someone from SIG, SIG scheduling. Like, Yeah, if we could get someone from SIG scheduling to okay it, I think then we're good to go. Okay. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm okay with it. Uh, if you want to explore the cluster registry option, um, that seems reasonable as well. And if you can come up with something where you could have a backwards compatible, uh, you, you know, start with this and then move to that, that seems reasonable too. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I was just uh, watching that proposal with the Hawkeye, the, the driver nice. registry thing. And then... <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Thank you Thank for you. that. Uh, and then looks like uh, Ben has support for mount options. Uh, I thought we already had support for mount options. So, uh, sorry, go ahead. Are you, are you there? Go ahead. Did Ben join? Uh, let me see. It doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. So he had reached out to me on on Slack about this, um, um, a way to um, copy mount, op mount options from um, from storage class, I think. Okay. So I haven't looked at this in detail um, to see if it's something that we already have, but uh, maybe what I'll, I'll maybe. What I'll ask him to do is uh, to open a uh, open an actual issue so he can explain exactly what this is solving. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah okay. I I had a look as well. I mean, uh, looks reasonably, but at the same time, like I don't know why there is such a huge diff actually. Uh, okay. Yeah, it looks like there's some generated code. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, the dev update generated a bunch of code not sure why uh, i think he had mentioned on friday uh, that there is some 
some dependencies that were not updated yet. And when, I guess, when he ran depth, that, that's what happened. But, um, but yeah. Um, so to make sure that you're not overloaded, Vlad, uh, I want to hand this yeah, off. Yeah, I just posted else. it. I'm not going to do can, anything. I can review this. This is missing unit test. Perfect. So. Thanks, yeah. Luis. So uh, the follow-up items are one, uh, open up an issue to describe what it is that's being fixed, and then uh, unit test and whatever else is needed. Yeah. And sorry, Hamant, were you uh, going to say something? Yeah, I was saying that, like, Luis already volunteered, so that's great. <laughs> I was saying mm -hmm. that I could review it, but okay. Oh, cool. Hey, feel free if, uh, you know, two eyes yeah. is better than one. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Well, I, I have two eyes. What, what was it? <laughs> Four <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Awesome. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Um, so let's say that is orange. And then, uh, Vlad, if you could add uh, who the reviewers are there, that'd be great, too. Uh, bugs that need attention, CSI test bug issues. Uh, I haven't yeah. heard anything yet. Uh, if I don't hear anything this week, I'm going to go at this myself. Okay, that seems reasonable. What is the feedback that uh, was there? The the problem is that the the um, the author of this PR mm -hmm. found an issue with mm -hmm. the, where the client keeps disconnecting, and I the see. issue was introduced by uh, a big change that Poli added because uh, they wanted CSI Senate to be included in other Ginkgo um, or Ginkgo uh, suites, which okay. makes sense. The problem is is that that in, that change somehow introduce a, a bug where it disconnects. So, okay. And I wanted both of them to talk to each other and figure it out. Okay. So. All right. Worth getting this uh, sorted out sooner rather than later. So I, I think that's a solid plan. Just, just take over. Yep. You don't hear back. Uh, scaling issues. Um, so Matt came in and gave us an update last week. Uh, it sounds like the biggest outstanding issue is this RBAC thing. Uh, and hopefully we get that result soon. Uh, thanks to Chang for looking into that. Uh, P0 CSI incorrectly sets FS group for all volume types. Um, so has uh, there been any progress on this? I think yeah, there's a. I opened a PR on Friday, I believe. Nice. Um, okay. Um, and to find out somebody had already submitted a much simpler PR, but oh. I think. Um, yeah, if you look at, at, right there at the bottom, um, this one, his PR doesn't have tests, so I might have to win that one. Okay. Uh, just a quick question, Vlad. So, how like FS group is always set for block devices, right? There's never a case where like when it, the call made like there's no implicit assumption that it'll be XT4 or something anywhere, correct? Yeah, we, we can, we're not making that assumption as FS type. Had, there was another uh, PR that was submitted to remove that assumption. So right. FS type can be submitted as a. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking that if it is assumed somewhere, then we might have to read it from the disk, which is not needed if FS type is explicitly set in the, in the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that yeah. It, it used, actually, yeah, that used to be the case where the type was being set defaulted to FS uh, ext4, but um, that was changed, I think, last quarter, I believe. Cool. I had a look at your PR. I like just a quick this thing. I, I'll look again and. Okay. Thanks. All right. Cool. So it sounds like uh, next steps might be if we could simplify the code here, but keep the test and then accept this PR since it has tests. Uh, yeah, uh, just, yeah, just feedback on the code and, okay. and um, I, I kind of, I added some tests to, I couldn't find a way to actually automate, um, to detect the, uh, the FS group for some reason it wouldn't work. So it's just a visual indication in a test that is testing the different cases. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot, Vlad. Sure. Uh, and does it also include this uh, second change for access mode? Or are you doing that separately? Yeah, I, that one I, I did not include that in there because it was going to be. I wanted so what I wanted to do is 
fix this once and for all the the mapping of of uh, um, access mode to to CSI uh, capabilities, and mm -hmm. so that we can have a definitive way of doing the mapping both in internal and um, in the external components. Got it. Those places. So I, I wanted to address that separately. Okay. Ben's PR uh, was touching this code. I wonder if he changed that. Uh, looks like he might have actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that's a problem that we could probably keep running into. So we, uh, I'd like to, if we can capture it in like a. Yeah. Address it more holistically. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. We'll uh, leave that outstanding. Uh, and then. Why are all of these assigned to you? This is no, no. I, I'm gonna remove my name. I just open okay. them up. Um, they okay. uh, they can I be, you know, they're open for anybody to get. Um, excessive pods using the same PVC. Okay. Um, so if we can get these assigned out to people, that would be great. I want to make sure I'm not overloading you with uh, 10 million things. Yeah. I'll. Um, I'll fix that documentation and remove my name. Um, Perfect. And I'll look for uh, more people internally if I can get them. If not, just... Okay. If uh, people on the call want to help out, uh, you got these four new bugs, feel free to take a look at them um, and, uh, and uh, take ownership of it if you can. Yeah, gonna... Brad, uh, sorry. <clears throat> that your PR is not same as the other, uh, other PR. UPR also checks for FS type, so it's, it's more than just adding tests. Just my PR did what? I'm sorry. Uh, your PR also checks for FS type. The other guy that opened for he just checks for read write mode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So all right. Yay for me. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, next up is miscellaneous updates. Why is test uh, and driver repo red? I think this was uh, due to some flaky tests. Uh, every time I opened a PR, they would uh, be red. I opened up some issues for that. Uh, do we need uh, CSI resources? I talked to Luis about this offline. Uh, Luis, uh, are we okay getting rid of this? Uh, there's some things in here. That are nice, uh, and I just don't know where to move them to. Um, yeah, if uh, if we could get that locked down, I'd really prefer to just get rid of this. It's one more unnecessary. All right, I'll just move okay. it to my repo. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll move it on to my my thing, and I'll keep it around myself. Okay, yeah, and I mean we've got the we've got the other docs repo, and we've got CSI tests, so if we could stick as much shit in there. Yeah, that's fine. It, that doc stuff there was how to do release management of okay. all the, it's a, it's a kind of like an umbrella. Yeah, kind of it's like a community thing. issue kind of thing. Yeah, um, if you call it a community, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, uh, I would be okay creating a, underneath the docs, having a subsection for community. You, yeah, that's fine with me, I can do that. That way we can. Uh, Actually, I can just shove it all in here. <laughs> perfect, I, I'm okay with that. Let's do that. All right, cool. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, updating internal documentation for 111. And do we still need to track this? Is there anything left for this? I don't think so. I think we can remove all of this now. Okay. All right, that's all that we have today. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? Hey guys, this is Ben. I just I didn't know about this meeting and Vlad just sent me a link to it. Hey Ben. Hey. Um yeah, I had a, a PR I just pushed to uh, the external provisioner. Yeah, we were taking a look at that right oh, here. This one. Okay. Uh do you want to talk about it? Well, I I don't know what was already said. So um the the first thing was I had to do update some packages in the vendor directory. Um and I don't actually know how to do that, so I just sort of took my best guess and updated the versions and it resulted in a relatively large change. <laughs> <See? laughs> um, did you, did you change anything in the, the uh, go package dot Tomo? Yeah, that's what I did is I, I modified go package dot Tomo. I ran Depp and sure upgrade okay. and, so, it, and it went bananas. Yeah. Don't, don't change Tomo. Okay. <laughs> Just do the Depp and sure if you need to. Okay. 
unless you're looking for new API versions. Well, that, what I needed was a new version of the external storage repo because it's just pinned to master, but it was a ridiculously old version of master. Um, so uh, I, I, I ran into a very, sorry, um, I ran into a very similar issue. Uh, I was able to resolve it. If, if you just kept the branch at master and you did uh, def ensure dash upgrade, it should just uh, point to yes. that. Okay, so I, so I may have done my vendor upgrade wrong and I, I can try to sort that out and, and get a a less large change that still doesn't break any dependencies. Um, yeah, the, the actual commit was in the, in the second commit, which is pretty small. And it's just, it just copies the mount options from the storage class to the PV and passes them through to the CSI driver. Um, there, there's no way to know which CSI drivers are gonna do anything with those mount options and which ones are going to ignore them, which Vlad pointed out was a, was a problem. Um, it, it would be nice if there was a way for plugins to notify Kubernetes whether they were able to do anything with mount options or not. I don't know if that's possible. Isn't well, it possible to do that via capabilities? Not, not without changing the CSI spec to add yeah, that exactly. as a capability. Yeah. Um, but but there's you could... Uh, oh, Ben, you're breaking up. Administration process where you know, we create the... Ben, you're breaking up. Oh, I'm sorry. Up. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, I don't know what that was. Um, we could modify the registration process so that uh, when the, the driver creates that uh, CSI plugin object, it, you could notify Kubernetes that way at a registration time. Uh, ben, but already the the mount options are like a capability in the this thing. So ideally, if the CSI driver doesn't support it, then it should be able to reject it, isn't it? Well, it, it's a one-way communication. The sidecar sends the options down to the driver or the plugin, and the plugin can use them or can ignore them. But there's no there's no back channel to to tell the tell the sidecar that it mount options are being ignored or mount options are being used. Um, which, which might be fine. I mean, I, I don't see any harm in passing down mount options and having them ignored. It just, it's one more thing that administrators have to know about, you know, that they might put mount options on some storage classes and they'll be ignored, whereas they put mount options on other storage classes and they'll be used. It could create confusion. Yeah, I think at the time of creation or something, it could be evaluated, possibly. Like, like not when you pass it, but when you call create volume, it's, it's possible to evaluate them, I think. Uh, but again, the plugin might not have proper validation mechanism. Uh, mount options are kind of hard to validate them without mounting, actually. So, yes. So, so in any in any case, this this just does the bare minimum of passing passing it through, um, and I'm in the process I think that of testing. Seems reasonable, isn't that what the external provisioner already did? How does it work today for uh, non CSI? Do folks have to actually put in mount options manually on the PV object? Because if they do, that's pretty frustrating. Uh, well, yeah, whatever creates the PV object, um, you would need to copy the, the mount options from mm -hmm. the storage class. And, and uh, uh, what my question is, is does it already do that? Do, it sounds like it should. Well, I, I, I know that Trident just copies it, cause that, but that doesn't use any library code. I mean, so yeah. every every external provisioner would have to do this work themselves unless there was mm -hmm. some shared library code that made it automatic. Interesting. Okay, because it sounds like uh, uh, that's what an external provisioner should be doing. It's, I am creating a storage class. The storage class says I should be using these mount options. It should apply those onto the PV object. I guess the question Hamant had is around validation. Uh, and we can't really validate, so that's fine. We'll just put it on the mount options, on the PV object, and then when mounting happens, the driver does the validation. Yeah, for, so for the non-external provisioners, there's a, there's a, a flag that, or there's a, there's a method get, that gets called that says supports mount options, and it returns true or false. Okay. And the CSI driver currently returns false, so uh, it just says, oh, no mount options. Um, and that's another change that's going to be needed after this, after this patch Got was it. merged, um, okay. But but that's for the internal ones. For the like right. dynamic, dynamic provisioners, would just go around that and copy the options themselves when they create the PV. Okay, that seems yeah. reasonable to me. <laughs> yeah, and some external provisioners support it, some don't. It, it might be an oversight actually, but 
Okay. Enjoy way, but but entry and, ones we, they do. And the only other point I wanted to make is this matters a lot more for NFS than for other uh, other types of plugins that just create ext4 file systems and mount them because there aren't that many options you care about on those. But for NFS, there's lots and lots of options that people want to play with. Yep, that makes sense. All right, cool. Thanks for uh, tracking this down, uh, Ben. Okay, no problem. All right, uh, I think we're well over time. Uh, anything else anybody wants to talk about? All right, cool. Then we will call it and uh, see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you.